President-elect Donald Trump's chief of staff, Reince Priebus, uh, spoke to Fox News about what he plans on doing when he's in the White House on the issue of Cuba. And uh, the response is bad. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. He said, we're not going to have a unilateral deal coming from Cuba back to the United States without some changes in their government. Repression, open markets, freedom of religion, political prisoners. These things need to change in order to have open and free relationships. And that's what President-elect Trump believes, and that's where it's going to head. Okay, so, uh, look, those goals on their own, are they... It, things I agree with. Of course, there shouldn't be repression. I would like it if they opened up their markets more. They started a little bit. They legalized small businesses recently. That's part of the deal Obama cut. Um, but should there be freedom of religion and no more political prisoners? Absolutely. I agree with all those things that they laid out. But the problem is they want to go back to the same thing that exacerbated the issue. So in other words, they're telling Cuba, if you don't do everything that we want you to do, Right now, well, then there's no deal, and even the things we already agreed on, we're going to go back on, and that's it. Yeah, but then you don't get that you're going right back to the thing that didn't work, and you're going to make the problem worse? I mean, there's a reason why the Castros are still in power after the fucking super long embargo, because it empirically did not work. <laughs> if the end goal was, if the... If the idea was, well, we're going to do the embargo, and then obviously the regime will collapse, and then you'll have a more liberal, open, free system or whatever. Well, okay, but we ran the test. <laughs> and you failed. So this reminds me of Hit like Hillary Clinton and the establishment Democrats. They just got their fucking clocks cleaned in an election, uh, and then they, they come back and they're like, oh, okay, just, hey, guys, let me just give you my advice on what we should do moving forward. You are the problem. Go sit outside. What are you talking about? Same thing here. Oh, guys, I know that we're the ones who made the Castros, you know, strengthen their grip on Cuba. But anyway, here's what we want to do in order to make it better. So go back to the thing that made it worse. So look, it just turns out, and this isn't the case in every individual instance, but it turns out that with Cuba, what you needed to do is open up the lines of communication, sit down at the table, talk things out, make a deal. And guess what? Some of the things in the deal we're, we don't like. I mean, that's the nature of international politics. You know, with the Iran deal, I mean, that was a rare instance where <laughs> any reasonable person pretty much got everything we wanted. With the, you know, guarantee of no creation of nukes, and you have the IAEA inspectors checking regularly, and they live up the ass of the Iranians, and all we had to do was basically lift sanctions on Iran and give them back some of their own money. So, I mean, that was a deal where it was, like, amazing. We got pretty much everything we wanted. Uh, but in the Cuba deal, we didn't. But hey, you know what? There's, it's been positive so far, because like I just said, the Republicans should be thanking Obama, unironically, thanks Obama, because after Obama's deal, Cuba legalized small businesses. That wasn't a thing before. It's a command economy, a centralized economy. They get, the state runs everything. They don't have private businesses. But after Obama's move, they were like, yeah, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to legalize uh, small private businesses. I mean, on that day, the Republicans should have came out with just fawning appreciation and adoration. Oh my God, Mr. President, oh, you did what we could only dream of doing. But look, that's the thing. At the end of the day, it, they might not even be, that might not even be why the Republicans care about Cuba. Because you know what it really might come down to? They just want Cuba. They're still butthurt over Cuba no longer being a puppet state of the U.S. Because that's what it was. Under Batista, that's what it was. Uh, so there was a fascist dictator propped up by the U.S., and Fidel Castro was the one who overthrew him, and we're, we were butthurt over that. Guys, the CIA tried to assassinate Fidel Castro over 600 times. I mean, that <laughs> there's almost no words for that. That's the most insane fucking thing I've ever heard. So it w it's not about, oh, we want more freedom and democracy for the people of Cuba, because when you controlled the island, you didn't give them freedom and democracy, you gave them a fascist dictator. So what it's probably about is these are people who simply want control of the island again, they want it to be a puppet state, and they want it to be part of the corporatocracy, they want to jack the resources. I mean, it's the, the same old game. So when Obama actually gets what they claim they want, hey, we just want him to be a little more free and a little more, you know, open up to capitalism. Well, they did that. Well, now we're going to, you know, 
go in the opposite direction and do the same thing that failed. And then what'll happen? It'll continue to fail. But they'd rather have this, you know, hey, cold shoulder embargo, block everything with Cuba, uh, no deal. Either that or you do everything we want and you become a puppet state again. Well, that's how children think and that's how petty, you know, authoritarians think. And the right approach is what Obama did, and it's slowly but surely moving in the direction of getting rid of all the political prisoners, you know, opening up the internet, legalizing more small businesses. So, um, the Republicans, man, there's nothing that they can't fuck up.